This is a video for Philosophy 102 uh, with Christina Hendricks. This is just to make up for some of the things I couldn't do while I was sick on Monday. I'm going to do one video before lecture on Wednesday and then probably another one after lecture on Wednesday to, to make up for some of the stuff I couldn't talk about. So this is about Epicurus and Lucretius. All of the things I say on this video will be true of both of those. I'm going to talk a little bit about their views on epistemology, but mostly their views on physics and the gods, which will set us up for talking about their views on death. So skipping this stuff, which we've already talked about in class. So Epicurus, and this should also read uh, Lucretius, because he thinks the same thing. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about Lucretius on, Monday, or on Wednesday in class. So epistemology just means a uh, theory of knowledge. So what do they think uh, has to be the case in order for someone to have knowledge? Or how do they think knowledge works? And the only thing that I'm going to say about this uh, that's really relevant to their views of death and, and what is good in life is um, that they were empiricists. And empiricist means that a short way of thinking about it is the original source of information for knowledge is experience, which just means that you don't get any of the data for what you might know anywhere except from experience originally. Now, the mind can then work on this data from experience and um, combine ideas and use logic on, on what you know and create new things from that, but ultimately everything comes from experience. Now, what does experience mean? There's really two kinds of experience. Um, there's the sensation of things outside of us. So anything you see, hear, smell, touch, taste. Or we can also have internal sensations in a way, experience of our own thoughts and feelings. So even if you're not you know, seeing something outside of you, you can have experience of what you're feeling or what, you, what you're thinking. And that can be part of the data that goes into your knowledge. Now, all this is important for, for thinking about their views of death and what's important in life, because if you can't get any information about those things from either internal, you know, senses of your own, what's going on inside you, or things from your five senses, then you can't get, um, uh, you can't rely on it for knowledge because you might be making a mistake. So Epicurus and Lucretius also um, have things to say about physics. And by physics, I'm just going to be talking about what are the, uh, how does, how does the universe operate and what are the main constituents of it? So for both, there's just two things really in the universe. There's material bodies and there's void. And material bodies is just, you know, anything that's made up of matter. And void is simply emptiness. It's just empty space and, and literally emptiness. And there's a couple of reasons why they think this is the case. At least there may be more, but one is, look, if we're just getting our information from our senses, we know that matter exists. We see, hear, smell, touch, taste it. Um, so we know that there are material bodies. And then you can reason logically that void must exist um, if those things are going to actually be moving. So they think of matter as you know, something that, that is full, that has um, a sense of substance and void is pure emptiness. So if the substance is going to move at all, it can't be the case that everything is pure substance or there would be no place for it to move. And similarly for cutting something, there has to be some way to, to break the things apart so that, that somehow you're going to have to insert a, a void in between there. Otherwise it would just be this pure fullness. And thinking along those lines too, um, matter and void exhaust the possibilities for what exists. If you've got substance or fullness and emptiness, there's nothing else. Um, everything is made up of substance or fullness or both, right? So, so that's the way they thought of, of matter being only, excuse me, the universe only being matter and void. Now, I've kind of set this up as a, a, an argument. I'm not sure that it works fully, but this is how I think they reason. So first premise, reality is made up of just these two things. Second premise, this was a common idea in uh, ancient uh, 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 times. Things cannot come into existence from nothing. You can't have something just appearing out of nothing, out of pure emptiness. Um, and partly Epicurus says something like, you know, if this were the case, if things could just pop into existence from nothing, then you wouldn't need to have like seeds for plants. 
and you know uh, uh, embryos for animals because they could just come into existence out of nothing but they don't we see by our senses that they come into existence from particular things that existed before that so you don't get a plant without a seed you don't get a, a cat without a, a, a small embryo so it, they don't just pop up out of nothing randomly then third premise since since things can't come into existence from nothing some material must be eternal otherwise there would be nothing at all if things could just pop into existence from nothing then um you know we could have stuff we could have stuff without it being eternal but since you can't get anything from nothing and yet we do have things now these must have come from previous things so in some sense something must be eternal but we also know that large bodies like um trees and chairs and people are not eternal they you know break apart they die they they uh, don't last forever and this leads us to the idea that there are atoms so epicurus lucretius they were not the first atomists but they were um some of the the early atomists uh, and so we've had the idea of atoms around for quite a long time they thought of them as uh, small parts of matter that are not further divisible so atoms means uncuttable or something like that indivisible uh, and they didn't you know know exactly what size they were exactly what they were made of but the idea is that there must be some small part of matter that you can't further divide if you could keep dividing matter forever then eventually it could dissolve into nothing and then you can't get something from nothing so then there would be nothing left etc so it has to be that there's some you know undiv indivisible part of matter no matter how small um, that that exists and since some part of matter must be eternal then those exist eternally and and how the universe works is the atoms just keep coming together and breaking apart and coming together into new formations etc and uh, that goes on forever because the universe itself given that the universe is simply made of what there is atoms matter and void in some sense that whole thing with all that stuff uh, exists eternally so that's their idea of of uh, the universe physics and and matter <laughs>